nation's capital, the mood has shifted from fearful to celebratory as spectators in Washington, D.C. listened to President Joe Biden appeal for unity and healing during his inauguration address as the 46th President of the United States. In Washington, D.C., Eliza Gonzalez Manglikmot reports. President Joe Biden has just taken oath, uh, and uh, oath taking was administered by Chief Justice U.S. John Roberts. Uh, and in his speech, the 46th President of the United States mentioned that today is America's day. It is Democracy's day. It is a day of renewal and resolve. President Biden said it is time to celebrate the triumph of democracy's cause because democracy has prevailed. Um, he he also made mention of the violence that happened in the Capitol two weeks ago. He said uh, while some sought to shake uh, democracy uh, by uh, violence violating the U.S. Capitol, he said we were able to carry out a peaceful transfer of power and that we have seen the resilience of the Constitution. He said we have, the, the country has come far, but there's so much more to do. And uh, he also uh, mentioned the impact of the coronavirus and uh, the cry for racial justice, but he said the United States won't be deferred. And um, he also said it is time to confront and defeat extremism and white supremacy. And as expected, he appealed for for what he calls the elusive of all things in democracy, and that is unity. He said, with unity, uh, the country can right wrongs, can defeat racism, demonism and extremism. And he said, what we need to achieve unity is history, faith, and reason. And also, without it, there's no peace and there's no nation. He called for the nation to start afresh by listening, seeing, and respecting one another. Now, earlier today, uh, to, uh, going here uh, to the capital, to the U.S. Capitol, we have seen, uh, like what we've mentioned, the layers and layers of security, uh, the very, very tight security around the, uh, the nation's capital uh, because of anticipation of uh, protest. But um, today, uh, uh, many of many people are hoping that after uh, after this unifying message by the by the president, uh, everything will uh, ease into uh, a, a better uh, state. Uh, in the whole country and while this group of people here behind me were um, uh, listening to the president's speech some were moved to tears some were uh, clapping jumping celebrating uh, for what they, they call uh, uh, a new hope we are only a few blocks from the U.S. Capitol where uh, everything is happening, but um, in this part of the nation's capital, you could feel a, a celebratory mood uh, that, that this group of people behind me uh, are all sharing. In Washington, Eliza Gonzalez, Manglikmot, Eagle News, we live in interesting times. Eliza, that was a that was a pretty good crowd uh, gathered behind you. What was the atmosphere in D.C.? Um, there were talks that it's like a war zone over there, with National Guards all over the city, and security checkpoints limiting the entrance to the city. Um, were there tanks? Were there um, armed um, military? Tell us. Okay, Ace, let me take you there. Well, in the, in the early hours of the day when we first got there, it was very quiet. It was very chilly. It was very cold. But you get this eerie feeling in some areas, you know, in D.C. Imagine D.C. where streets were empty, no moving cars on the roads. Um, for me, as someone who frequents the streets of uh, Washington, D.C., the silence in many parts there today, it was indeed deafening. But uh, closer to the Capitol, as we walk toward, uh, toward the Capitol today, you see the checkpoints, police and uh, National Guard members in, in 
battle gear. Uh, and you were correct, uh, Ace, there were tanks all over. They were used to uh, block some major roads. Now, police cars were also in every corner, and these tall, non-scalable uh, fences were put up around the red zone or the security perimeter. Uh, at first glance, it did feel like a war zone, but, you know, my point of view, uh, my point of reference is that of uh, from movies. But after a few blocks, uh, seeing the same scene over and over and over and witnessing the guards interact, they were actually interacting with civilians, but not in a too friendly manner, but not also in an antagonistic way. Uh, it was just right. The interaction was just, it was very civil. It, it felt more safe uh, feeling their presence there there uh, than uh, giving out a feeling of fear. It was more a feeling of uh, safety. In, in your report, uh, we saw a couple who were very emotional, um, obviously about probably going back to what happened in, in, in January 6th. Some were crying and uh, I myself was got a little bit emotional watching that uh, inauguration. Tell us more about that. Um, Ace, after the president was sworn in, the crowd started cheering, as we have seen. And then when he started his speech, they fell silent again. And then uh, they would applaud every now and then. It was indeed a, a celebration. Everyone, uh, as you've seen in the footage, everyone was wearing masks. But you hear their cheers and their eyes. They say it all. Um, we had the opportunity to speak with a Washington resident. Her name is Carol Bench Lou, And she shared with us how upset she was two weeks ago uh, with what happened at the U.S. Capitol. But now that the new president has been sworn in, she said she's hopeful to echo the president's uh, message of unity. Uh, let's take a look. And I think Joe Biden is delivering the right message that, you know, we're going to move forward together. Huh? Yeah. I feel good. <laughs> he called for healing too. You, you, how how long do you think this will take uh, after what you've seen in the past uh, four years? Yeah, it's it's gonna take time. You know, um, I just think at least we have a commitment to coming together. And I'm not. I didn't feel that last time around in 2017. So I'm hopeful. Well, I was very scared two weeks ago. We we live less than a mile from here, so I was a little worried. Just. You have that much energy, you know, pumped up, and then I just wasn't sure where it was going to go following, you know, that evening. But then walking around the last two weeks, I feel like, okay, we learned our lesson. Let's get the reinforcements and prepare. So now it feels good. I don't know. I feel better. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I would just echo what I just heard Joe Biden say. I'm just so filled with hope. Yeah, I'm really feeling good today. <laughs> Now, that was Carol, and she is a resident of Washington, D.C. Now, we got to uh, speak to an, uh, someone from California. She flew in all the way from California with all her kids to be part of history. And she said, as a woman and as a, a one belonging to a minority in the United States, she said uh, she, is, uh, she was in D.C. to celebrate what America is now. Um, take a look. What brought you all the way here for this event? Um, I believe it's a moment for unity as a country and being that I am a woman of a minority, it's very important that I came here because the last four years I felt highly discriminated by the person that lived in the White House. Um, Gersela, you mentioned uh, that you're a woman of minority. Today, we made history. Uh, Vice President Kamala Harris, the first female, the first African-American, uh, as the vice president, what's your thoughts about that? It's so special, but what makes it more special is that she was my senator from California. And being able to attend it here with my nieces and my daughter and teaching them that we could break glass ceilings. We have to have hope and never give up. I think that's the most important thing. If I could teach my kids something, it would be to be resilient and don't give up hope ever. Graciela, two weeks ago, uh, the... the feeling here was a lot different. Um, what did you say about what happened at the Capitol two weeks ago? It was heartbreaking, but that was not America. This is America, united, coming together. There's no colors, there's no languages. We're just united as American. And for the last four years, in order to be American, you had to be blonde with blue eyes. 
But America is a melting pot. You can never say what an American looks like because we come in different colors and different sizes. We are like ice cream flavors, all kinds of them. Okay, one more, one last question. The president asked for unity and healing, but he said uh, it's going to take uh, the whole country to do so, to move forward. Uh, how long do you think will this healing take? I think it's going to take a process. We can't just expect us to be united tomorrow, but we have to take that responsibility. Love our friends, love thy neighbors like we love ourselves. And I have Republican friends. I'm a diehard Democrat. But I love my Republicans, friends, and I always focus on what I could do, not what other people could do and what is under my control. And I believe that it's up to every American citizen to bring unity back into this country. Thank you very much. You're welcome. So Ace, despite the cold weather, it is safe to say that the feeling was pretty warm and the future looks uh, pretty bright. Thank you so much, Eliza Gonzalez Manglik Mud from Washington, D.C. When we come back in Eagle News America exclusive, a political management expert shares with us his thoughts on what to expect from the Biden Harris administration. We'll see how Oakland is celebrating Vice President Kamala Harris, Americans sharing their hopes for the new U.S. leadership, and a Hawaii state official's thoughts on resuming duties amid the COVID-19 pandemic. This is Eagle News America. Stay with us.